Okay, so um, again, not really a news story as such, but um, obviously a couple of weeks ago, I did take a first look at the Surface laptop with the Qualcomm X Elite, the Snapdragon X Elite rather. Uh, looked at some of the games and uh, wasn't particularly impressed. However, um, there have been Windows revisions. There have been driver revisions. Um, there was a firmware revision for the Surface laptop yesterday. Um, so things are sort of improving. However, a feature contained within the Copilot uh, feature set is Auto SR, which is uh, Microsoft's own take on super resolution. And uh, I've taken a look at it. Initially, when I first got the laptop, I wasn't so impressed with it, but it does seem to have improved. And uh, I've been sharing assets with, with you guys, and I'm kind of curious as, as to what you think about it. Um, Alex, I guess you're the super resolution expert here. So oh, I'm boy. very, very interested in hearing about what you think. Well, I think oh, for the laptop use case, um, it's or it's also like when we talk about Steam Deck or uh, ROG Ally, uh, that you have to just realize at, at some moment you're dealing with some like very limited power limited. In this case, it's probably limited in a lot of ways then that we can't really even know because it's like this closed gpu driver system like we just don't know a lot of stuff about uh these qualcomm uh laptops and socs yet in terms of what like what's actually limiting performance so you're dealing with this like closed system and you have to like just like i was showing in my loss of scaling video you have to like take certain things like just you know, in stride, like, oh, it's not going to get great image quality and the performance isn't going to be great. And I kind of feel that way with, like when I use a Steam Deck or any sort of power limited device, like when we talk about Switch videos. So I feel that way about this. So with those limitations in mind, you kind of look at any way you can get the best experience possible. And in the past, bef when before things like good upscaling existed, you'd be in this really awkward and ugly situation where you're playing at like 1440 by 900 on a 1440p monitor or something like that it's just be it's ugly scaling awful looking experience <laughs> like really bad like I, I hate the way that looks but in this case auto sr is i feel based upon what you've shown so far to me in the things that are potentially scaling up to 4k well maybe we talk about that i don't know but uh in like you sent me and uh i think a comparison i let's i guess yeah the, the one that i was kind of interested in is the borderlands one first yeah is because i feel like when you put the raw internal image there which is apparently 720p and you show what that looks like with taa versus the auto sr upscaled output i feel like it's radically better in that game yeah uh it it, it is resolving anti-aliasing i would say on a lot of edges better uh the edges that are upscaled do not have a pixelated blurry look like the, the combination of the two uh and uh, in motion i do think it is a bit cleaner it still has similar issues like you sent me a videos of control to there i think it looks a lot better than the standard uh, what you could get otherwise at the same internal resolution. Uh, but there, I think with like smaller elements like Jesse's hair, her eyelashes, especially, I think, uh, you can notice that it is not magical. It is still some sort of lower internal resolution. So you get pixel popping there. And I think though, in general, though, it is a vastly superior image. Uh, and I was pretty surprised by that. And I think there's a lot we need to learn more about what auto SR is doing to kind of get a sense like, okay, well, how is it producing such a good looking edge at 4K? Uh, and I don't think it looks overly stylized in a bad, bad way. No. I don't think it does. Uh, yeah. and that is another surprise for me. <laughs> there's some <laughs> weird stuff here in how it works, which is um, essentially you set your desktop to whatever output resolution you, you want. I mean, I guess if you've got a 4K display, you would set it to 3840 by 28, uh, 3840 by 2160. You boot the game and you'll note that it actually um, forces the game to run at a lower resolution. So um, in the case of um, the games I was testing, it would go to 720p 
So you wouldn't be able to select 1080p, you wouldn't be able to select 1440p and then go to 4K. You're kind of, it seems to work in a, in a window of between uh, 700 to 900 lines, as I understand it, um, mm. which is interesting. There is an option in the control panel to not change the resolution, uh, which is something I'm going to need to investigate to see what that actually does. I think it probably just applies the process to the existing image and goes from there. I mean, maybe hmm. it would, yeah, it, it would be odd. But the point is that, yes, it forces a lower resolution. It cuts out the options in game to access higher resolution. So in the direct a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about why it was running at you know, games are running at 768p. That was because Auto SR was forced on. It wouldn't let me run at 1080. But um, yeah, basically it forces a lower resolution and then it upscales to whatever your desktop is set at, or more specifically, the active resolution um, that's that's there. You know, for example, on if you look at the advanced options on Windows, resolution it you know you can have your display set to 1440p but it might still be producing a 2160p output that right. 2160 output is what auto sr is going to upscale to and um from what i can see and we can run some quick numbers here with borderlands where i tested native 720p and then auto sr at 1080 1440 2160 there's really no apparent difference in performance so, you know, unlike DLSS, there's there's no computational cost, but we think that the cost is actually in latency, right, Alex? Right. I think the idea is the, the upscale is happening off chip yeah. on the MPU and you're paying for it uh, by them delaying a frame and the entire upscale process takes is a shorter amount of time than the delay of yeah. the frame. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it does I guess look, that's it. Yeah, so you can look at that in two ways. I mean, I'm not really comparing with um, the output resolution here because I think you know it's it's upscaling to an output resolution, but it's not really comparable to an out out that output resolution natively. Um, it just looks better on a 4K display, for example. So yeah, the Borderlands comparison is really quite interesting because. You're right, Alex. It's re it is resolving more detail. It does appear to be doing some kind of anti-aliasing there, but we're unsure. And I'm I'm pretty sure, actually, thinking about it, that it is just a post-process. Yeah, um, it has to be. Yeah. So it's it's basically just working with the information given in any given frame. It doesn't have reference to prior frames, so you do get post-process artifacts. It kind of reminds me back in the day of like FXAA. Uh, obviously on a much cruder level. But yeah, you get that same kind of shimmer on edges. And um, But the point is that you do get a presentable image on a much higher resolution display when you are rendering at, at 720p. And it is, you know, it is completing shapes that are kind of misshapen at 720p. I guess looking at control again, uh, when you're walking through the corridor with the um, the circular elements at the top of the screen there, you can see that that is actually rendering quite nicely. And um, control on the Qualcomm does actually run at pretty much 60 frames per second, uh, give or take. And so it does actually look pretty good. <laughs> right. So, yeah, it's really interesting, uh, the effect that we're seeing here. The reservation that I've got is that... Um, well, what can I say? My opinion of the Snapdragon X Elite's GPU hasn't really changed. I'd still consider it to be suboptimal slash pretty poor. So all of the tests that we've done with Auto SR have obviously been in combination with a GPU that's not particularly hot. But, you know, <laughs> a few weeks from now, Strix Point APU from AMD is coming. It is... Oh, boy. Co yeah, it's co-pilot compatible. So I fully expect that Auto SR will work on a on a decent GPU, and then there's and then you know we're going to be seeing Strix Point APUs that are released in combination with RTX GPUs in laptops. So what's cool. going to happen then with Auto SR? Because they, I mean, the one thing you, which you can say about Auto SR is it basically processes anything you feed it. So you can feed it an FSR two image but you might want to actually feed it a DLSS image. I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen then. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, John, you've looked at the Double assets. Double scale. Uh, any thoughts? Yeah. So first of all, obviously, I think this is intended for laptop use primarily, right? Yeah. And so blowing these up to a laptop screen makes a lot more sense than on a large screen. Like I'm viewing on a large screen right now, and the issues are certainly apparent, especially with things like thin objects, which kind of reveals the post-process nature, like Lara's yeah. hair, or Lara's hair, sorry. Uh, there's thin objects in the background of Borderlands. They kind of have that sp- that effect where you can see them sort of jumping between like a virtual pixel grid. It kind of reminds me of the lack yeah. of the lack of a vertice, vertices precision in PlayStation games when emulated at high res, you know what I mean? Where it kind of snaps yeah. between two points. You kind of get that effect here, but I still think it's really pretty impressive. If this is just a straight spatial, like post-process kind of effect. And I suspect it looks pretty darn good on, on the laptop screen. Like you mentioned Steam Deck, Alex, and you can get away with a lot on that small screen, Steam Deck screen, right? Like low resolution, mm-hmm. uh, it, it it actually holds up pretty well. It's only when you blow it up does it become an issue. But I would also venture that I've been doing a lot of scaling of when I play Switch games and other low res content. I've been using uh, like stuff like the Tink 4K or the Morph disconnect i have that connected to the secondary input on my tv i can just swap the swap the input over to that at any point and get nearest neighbor upscaled uh footage of whatever i'm viewing right or Mm -hmm. you know and i actually think 720p with nearest neighbor upscaling looks really good like when it's scaled correctly and not blurred into a mess it's way better than you'd expect Mm-hmm. I think I actually think it's quite usable even on a large screen. And so when it comes to this kind of stuff, I kind of flip back and forth on whether a post process is actually superior to just doing really clean, sharp upscaling. In yeah. some ways, I kind of prefer the sharp upscaling because you don't get any extra like smearing or potential pixel issues cropping up. HUD. HUD, HUD. stuff, right? Everything just looks clean and native and I think it works and I think lower resolutions like 720p have been given a bad reputation because of all these attempts at upscaling uh the rise of just all the different ways that images are processed now 720p can look really bad but like even just like a raw no AA 720p image when scaled up properly can look pretty darn good yeah, we've got the loss of a scaling app of course not only do we have the loss of scaling app we have the Steam Deck right you can put the Steam right. Deck in a dock uh Integer. It outputs to 4K, but you use integer scaling from 720. Looks pretty dope. That's all mm-hmm. I'm saying. So, like, it's kind of a, <laughs> you kind of got to pick what you want to do based on the game. Like, for instance, you know, something like Borderlands, I think, would probably look better with near scaling because of the cartoony art style. Something like Tomb Raider, maybe that would actually look better with auto SR. If you're yeah. playing like a pixel art sort of game or some, you know, like a retro style boomer shooter probably better with like a, a clean upscale with like sharp pixels versus something like auto SR. Basically what I'm saying is I would like to see Microsoft implement auto SR in a way that's similar to the way steam deck does. It's sort of flip out menu where you could say, imagine if you press a button on the laptop and it brings out a menu and it's like, all right, I want to upscale whatever's on screen with auto SR. I want to do integer scaling. I want to do, I want to cap the frame rate. <sighs> this like, there's all these little things they could just put that in the sidebar Give the user full control. It's a closed sort of laptop system now, not a normal Windows machine. They could implement this stuff. And I think it would make the product like a million times better. <laughs> right. right. I mean, the game the game bar is a thing in Windows that I don't take <laughs> nearly enough advantage of, of course, but I feel like it's uh it's also a missing opportunity Rethink in it. that case. Yeah, rethink it also. NVIDIA, I really also think they should redo the current method of how they do scaling. It's it's really, at least with the... I, the NV app doesn't have access to this, to my current knowledge, at least, to the same degree. But like the way you deal with integer scaling in Windows is just like flat sucks. on NVIDIA, and it sucks. That's why loss of scaling is way better. Um, so, yeah, I would really like to see... I mean, auto SR, the active signal thing is a bit annoying, actually, um, because it's yeah. counterintuitive to, I think, to most the way people view things. Because when people think they you chose a resolution, they don't actually think about what the 
baseline signal is actually i don't think i mean i usually look at that i'm always like oh damn that's right yeah. um mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah i'm guessing that auto sr probably would work very well um processing a signal that's already upscaled to whatever mm-hmm. the desktop resolution is you know, right. for example you know let's say you've you've moved down to 1440p you've got a 4k screen it probably wants that pure 1440p input rather than an upscaled one um the other thing the last thing i'll quickly say about auto sr because i do find this really intriguing it's just a shame it's 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 linked to a laptop that's not particularly great for gaming and to be fair wasn't designed for that um you've basically it works best when you use taa let's put it that way um, because it's not great at resolving sub-pixel issues. Um, you kind of need, even if it's a blurry image, it needs to be a, a, a temporarily consistent image to actually work pretty well, because um, something's got to produce that consistent image because it doesn't have a temporal element within its oh, own yeah. scaling. And that's actually the biggest difference, I think, but, uh, comparing Auto SR to something like uh, DLSS Ultra Performance Mode, um, where it does have that consistency, you know, obviously it has its own issues, but you know, it, it does have that consistency, which auto SR does not, um, uh, but certainly a fascinating technology. And I really want to get to grips more with this. I mean, I think it's just been quite problematic, uh, generally. I mean, we'd love to know what's going on with the, um, uh, arm translation layer, Difficult to say when the GPU is so poor and the driver is so poor, you know, is it is it because of a CPU issue? Is it because uh, of the driver? You just kind of don't know. We hope to have some content on that next week, um, along with maybe some more answers on Auto SR. I have quote unquote reached out, which is journalist code for sending an email to, uh, <laughs> to, to Microsoft to say, hey, can we speak to these guys who are taught, uh, mentioned on the Microsoft blog and try and get some more insight into how this works. Um, but yeah, I mean, in the meantime, what can I say? I was ple- pleasantly surprised and I'm really interested in taking a look at how it's going to interact with Strix Point, and particularly Strix mm. Point when it's with a dedicated GPU because it should all just work there. Uh, so yeah, interesting stuff coming soon and, and ahead. 